Family and Children's Services, which is what the Department of Health and Human Services hired to run the Lackland Camp. Now, if you go to the Baptist Family and Children's Services website, it says that they serve God by giving families a new start. And of course, that's all well and good. They're taking care of these families. But when did they become a security force? When are they providing, you know, when do they get the authority to arrest medical staff for like a carrying spearhead. a cell phone? They're spearhead for the Obama administration. Well, tellingly, in this article, they call themselves the brown shirts. A counselor inside the Lackland Air Force Base said, it was a very submissive atmosphere. Once you stepped onto the grounds, you abided by their laws, the brown shirt laws. Now, of course, this is telling because in the run-up to the 2008 presidential election, Barack Obama promised that he would work to implement a domestic security force which would rival that of the U.S. military. And many people dubbed this proposed force the brown shirts. It's a term um, used to kind of describe a Nazi assault force that they were charged with uh, arresting dissidents, silencing criticism, and execution of anyone who couldn't be re-educated. That's bizarre. We, we've reached a point, there was a few years ago, where the AmeriCorps in Wisconsin was having the white kids put white bracelets on so that they would remember the white to be, guilt yeah white <laughs> guilt to be sensitive to uh folks of other color or whatever what they're doing is they're using these kids and they're planting these seeds of ignorance in their minds mm -hmm. and they're going to roll them out and as they're you know as their families come in as as more illegals come in they're going to be added to that and then they're also going to add to the progressive voting agenda, which exactly, uh, will, will, will collapse our country. And then eventually they're going to take our gun rights away and everything like that. They'll, they'll embed all these thoughts in their mind, like you said. It'll be like this little rogue army that they're building up. Right, and these the brown shirts that are inside of these internment camps, they're not there keeping the peace between the migrants. They are there to arrest medical staff who might be caught with a you, cell phone. You said it again, though. I, I did catch you. You said migrants. So <laughs> let, me, let me just tell you the definition of a migrant. A migrant is a person who moves regularly in order to find work, especially in harvesting crops, or it's an animal that shifts from one habitat to another. They are committing a crime when they set foot into our country. It's not, it's not some thing that's out there that that's, you know, we can debate. They are committing a crime. Joe Arpaio, why, why are my jails filling up with illegals? Why, why don't we send the military down to the border to deal with this criminal activity while the administration is acting like this is some humanitarian effort? So let's just stop calling this a humanitarian crisis. They keep trying to say it's racist because we have a border fence. I mean, if we go to Mexico, if we go to Canada, we're going to get stopped at a border. Exactly. In the United States of America, driving in the state of Texas with Texas license plates on your car, you get stopped in America. Hey, are you an American citizen? I was like, man, I don't want to play this game. Well, let's talk for a second about we are naturalized citizens. We're also made up of people that have worked hard to become citizens. Mm -hmm. We are an economy that is broke. We are led by a president that has no leadership. He's got the worst poll in history. Right. Uh, and we've all been stabbed in the back by this administration. This is what's happening now is it's it's too much. It's right. too much for the American psyche to even deal with. And, well, I stared those brown shirts in the face today. I saw them down in Lackland. Let me tell you what. Bring it. These <laughs> guys are weaklings. They ain't got nothing. So just keep on doing what you're doing, America. Stand up to these guys. Well, absolutely. I think it's very telling being Independence Day and everything that we have the people there that were able to reroute the buses. They were protesting, they were waving the American flag, they rerouted the buses, and the media is calling these people racist. They're saying they're doing it. These people are protesting the fact that we are aiding and abetting criminals, basically. They are being forced to pay to bus these illegals into San Diego or wherever they're being shipped, and people are fed up about it. And then all of a sudden, it's racist to wave the American flag. And people here say, like, you know, destroy the country. You can look at places like San, I think it's San Bernardino, California, the county out there. And was it 2009? They sent, spent about $60 million for welfare benefits for illegal immigrants. And that's just illegal immigrants. That's not anybody else in their county. So it's a very real impact as people just say, oh, you, you guys are racist. You say they, they're diseased and they're all gang members. No, not all of them have diseases. Not all of them have, not all of them have gang affiliation. But you have to look at the very, you know, real fact that this thing at the bottom level just cost us money. 
I mean, we, we train the Zetas, the, Zeta, the, the drug cartels, the only way through Mexico safely to our borders to get in our country. And our government trained the Zetas at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So these guys are training them. Now they're the ones smuggling the kids there. It's just one big plot by the Obama administration yeah, we to had just slowly destroy our country. And we want to stress that these illegal immigrants are not just coming from Central America and Mexico. They're coming from all over. They are 80% now other than Mexico, which means they're coming from Pakistan, India, China, mm -hmm. you name it. They're coming across our borders while our administration, the Border Patrol, are dealing with all these kids. And it, it is just accelerating as we speak. Right. The borders are wide open. Let's take a look at that report. These cities just above the U.S.-Mexico border don't receive any federal funding. The law-abiding, land-owning residents of towns such as Falfurius, Texas, are overrun by a tsunami of illegals as a result of what's called the funnel effect. The militarization of the border, which includes checkpoints, barriers, and security technology, diverts the human smuggling operations into treacherous, searing, and rugged terrain that delivers many illegal aliens to their deaths. And ranch owners and Texas border volunteer founders Mike and Linda Vickers contending with the outcome. They're all contributing to organized crime by paying large sums of money to be brought in here. And to give you an example, uh, the Chinese are paying 50,000, the Indians are paying 10 to 20,000, all the Central Americans, the average is about 7,000. So, and the Mexicans, uh, uh, especially Southern Mexico, are paying 3,000. So it's a huge, huge uh, money event for the cartels, uh, probably even more lucrative than the drug business. As one of them was uh, climbing over the fence, he dropped uh, a package. And that package uh, was an Urdu dictionary. Urdu is a language uh, spoken in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in that uh, uh, translation book, Urdu and English, there were a lot of phrases circled and outlined. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? You must pay in dollars. So we know that uh, special interest countries, in particular countries like Pakistan or Afghanistan that are not particularly friendly with our country, are slipping through here under the disguise of, and under the, uh, all this other uh, activity that's going on where these families are given up and, and the Border Patrol uh, resources are being compromised. Well, a big thank you to the whole crew. You've done an amazing job covering the crisis at the border. And, you know, it seems like now more than ever, Americans really need to show their patriotism, wave those American flags every day of the year, not just the 4th of July. We've got to continue standing up to the tyranny, standing up to this lawlessness with the spirit of 1776. And in the spirit of 1776, we have a summer blowout special this weekend only. It's our July 4th Independence Day sale. Made in 1776 t-shirts are just 1776. And don't forget, we're running our Prison Planet Summer Special for a limited time. It's just $39.95 a year. It was three months free, and now you're getting five months free. That's 27% off the regular price. It goes from 15 cents a day to 11 cents a day. And remember, with 11 users, that is one penny a day. Now, thank you all so much for joining us here tonight. We'll see you again Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Happy 4th of July. Finally, on this special July 4th, 2014 edition of InfoWars Nightly News, I want to close out this transmission with a report to you, the viewers and listeners, of where InfoWars is right now. Because this operation belongs to you as much as it belongs to myself or Rob Dew standing to the left of me or the crew in there in the control room. We are all in this together, not just in the United States, but worldwide. The idea of human liberty of due process, of freedom, that your home is your castle, that you have a right to privacy, that you have a right to self-defense, that you have a right to raise your children as you see fit, and to go to church or not go to church, to produce the art and literature that you want. This is a fight for basic freedom. And to have freedom, we've got to recognize tyranny from liberty. And more and more people worldwide, not just here in the U.S., are realizing that. The report 
He is positive in many respects, but also negative in others. There's never been an awakening happening this big or this fast. But the establishment and the control freaks, the, the totalitarians, have never had as many tools of domination and control as they have now. But if we the people will all simply do small things every day to resist, every day to speak out, every day to get involved, we can defeat this system in the arena of ideas. We can have a velvet revolution, 1776 2.0, where we vote with our dollars to support institutions, media, and systems that promote freedom, where we speak out against corruption, where we don't comply with corruption, where we engage in more and more forms of civil disobedience, because when tyranny is the law of the land, it is not just our duty, it is not just our right, it is an act of survival to say no to those forms. So no matter what you do, no matter how big or how small, it is having an absolutely massive effect on the globalist. The power of the individual reaching out to other individuals with shared values is unstoppable. We can have a new enlightenment. We can have a new renaissance if we simply reach out and take it in our hands. That is the true fulfillment of the human spirit. And we stand here at the very crossroads. The report on InfoWars is we're reaching more people than ever. It's an incredible responsibility to be so successful. And I want to thank you for your prayers, your support, the fact that you're continually spreading the word. And I want you to realize that when you call into my radio show and say, you're the new Paul Revere, you're so great, Alex, that it actually upsets me. Because I want you to understand something. You are Paul Revere. You are the answer. You are the resistance. We are together in free association, loving liberty. And of course, I'm a modern Paul Revere because we all are. We all have power. If you think that it's just Alex Jones that can be successful, if you think it's just Alex Jones that can take action, you're buying into the enemy's lies. You have the power. All over the country, they're arresting people that have lemonade stands. They're arresting people that put chalk on the ground with free speech messages on their own sidewalks that they paid for. And why are they doing that? Threatening a year in prison in Las Vegas, six months in jail in Austin. Because they're scared of you and your ideas being expressed that aren't globalist and aren't corporate and aren't monopolies. They want a monopoly of force. They don't want you to be able to defend yourself. They want a monopoly over your family with the state running your family. They want a monopoly over you going to a cashless Walmart buying Chinese slave goods. They want to dominate you. So the modern Paul Revere isn't just going to ride around and say to arms to arms, the British are coming. They're going to say to the info war, the globalist corporatists have already occupied us and recognize that they've taken over so that we can begin the process of resisting them like Gandhi did peacefully by simply marching to the sea. They had a tax on salt. You had to buy it from the British government, from the British East India Company at hundreds of times what it should cost. He marched hundreds of miles with thousands and thousands of people joining him and then hundreds of thousands to the sea and gathered the salt for himself and showed that they didn't have a monopoly of control. And that was the beginning of the end of that empire's control in that region. And it's the same thing here today. Your little acts of defiance, like Rosa Parks sitting at the front of the bus, will bring this tyranny to its knees. When they attack you, when they demonize you, when they come after you, remember it's because they are scared of what you stand for. They are scared of you not being a biological android that they can just program. July 4th is one of the great examples of underdogs defeating a military that never been stopped. And certainly our country's had its share of problems and has been demonized by modern tyrants because they're scared of what the documents say. Not that the documents were ever fully fulfilled or fully realized, but that if they were, it would symbolize a true new era of human exploration and freedom that I dream of and I know you dream of as well. So on this July 4th, 2014, from the heart of Alex Jones to all of you out there and from our whole crew here at InfoWars, the state of humanity is dire. But the sleeping giant is now waking to the fight and the challenge. And so the news couldn't be better. It is always darkest before the dawn, and the dawn is coming. So to all of you out there who have the same love of freedom as I do, we are kindred spirits. We are brothers. We are fellow travelers. That's a communist term, but I'm taking it back for humanity. In the great quest for freedom, 
and life is about